Hello, Tina. Hi, Hank. Like a new show you're now. Gonna, you're going to let an old pilot in? <laughs> God, I missed you. Like yep. a brother. <laughs> yeah, well. Hank Henry Jackson and Carl Kasgard. We can chew the fat for a okay, while. Okay, I'm glad to see you. Two men, friends, who understand and appreciate the meaning of world conflict, the consequences of war, and both very much attached to a particular piece of history, the Halifax bomber. Show me where you were. I was stuck on that sir, right there. You were there. tail yeah. end Charlie tail in the end. back. I was right on the tail end here. West Hank was just 20, a kid from Calgary, when he joined up and found himself on the other side of the world, jammed into the tail gun turret of a Halifax bomber, trying to shoot down German fighters in the pitch dark at 40 below. So you'd have nothing between you and whatever was shooting at you. <laughs> That's right. And I think it was better seeing where we've been than go, where we're going into because, oh, it's just when you saw that flak, you think it's impossible to go through there. You can't get through without being hit. Well, I was lucky at that stage in my life. I had good night vision. I could see things, you know, both sides. I see some moving anywhere I was good. I could see that. And I had good eyesight, so that helped a lot. Most guys never saw it coming. And I often thought it was going to happen. I was quick. How old were you there? Uh, that's about uh, 10 years old. Carl Kasgard, on the other hand, was too young to be called to war. But it captured him anyways. As a kid, he found every one of the Jell-O planes of the World Collection. Jell-O had one of these airplane wheels in every packet of Jell-O. So I ate, smoke. I ate a lot of Jell-O. But there was one plane missing from the Jell-O collection. There's the Liberator there. Yes, yes. But no Halifax. No. Hanley Page Halifax. Canadians flew it 70% of the time, including Hank Jackson. Yeah. But they get no credit. The Halifax was the workhorse of the Second World War, flying over 80,000 missions, many of those by Canadian crews. Guys like Hank Jackson in the 428 Ghost Squadron. Hank survived 34 missions, incredible when you consider almost half of those who served on bombers didn't make it back. I think it's a waste of bloody when you think all the young kids that it's tough. You now try to explain to some of the parents how you could make it and they didn't. Hank was well decorated for his service, including the distinguished flying cross. He came home and served the city of Calgary, among other things, as a motorcycle cop. Carl, meanwhile, had grown up to become a pilot spent most of his career flying with Air Canada. Is that it there? Yeah. Wow. That's the Bolton Ball tail turret for a Halifax bomber. But in his retirement, that obsession with the missing Halifax bomber of his youth... I can see why Hank said he was a little cramped in there. ...got the better of him. And I found it in a guy's garden west of London, England. This is the foundation yeah. of a Halifax he and a team of volunteers have spent decades traveling around the world looking for parts. There's a main landing gear that we found in Malta for a Halifax. Most Halifaxes did not survive. They were scrapped after the war. This one, Carl was part of a team that helped pull it from a lake in Norway and had it rebuilt. You can find it here at the National Air Force Museum in Trenton, Ontario. Connections are good. But Carl is working on another one. Just remember when this brute lights up, you want to protect your ears. Okay. This is 1,700 horsepower, okay? Let it go. Okay. He now has four Halifax Hercules radial engines at the Bomber Command Museum in Nanton, Alberta. Did you hear it okay? I, I can't imagine four of them. 
Can you imagine 160 of these engines running at one time Already on a Canadian bomber base? Getting ready to do a run. Everything in red, we've gone around the world and we've recovered everything in red. And he is now much closer to getting a significant portion of the rest. From the bottom of the ocean, off the coast of Sweden. This summer, working with divers from the Swedish Coast and Sea Centre, they started finding and recovering well-preserved pieces of a Halifax that was ditched there over 70 years ago. The project is temporarily stalled as it's run out of money. But Carl says that will only slow him down. It won't stop him. I don't know where shot us because they're going so fast. What pushes him forward is a friendship that developed during his research with a guy who lived to tell the tale. All these years of researching the bomber crews, and then I end up in Calgary with a rear gunner of a Halifax. He's, nine, well, 95 now. And, you know, he's the last man standing as far as I'm concerned. He's the best of a generation, and he's my hero. And the ultimate for me is I'm getting him a Halifax. That's the best I can give him. Perhaps, but there's one more thing. After meeting Hank and developing that great bond, Carl learned that Hank's medals were missing. The death in the family had cast them astray almost 20 years ago. That is until Carl found them, and this past September presented them to Hank in a ceremony at the Nanton Bomber Command Museum. <laughs> Hank says his medals aren't for him, they're for the other guys, the ones who never came home. Over 70 years on, he still suffers from survivor's guilt. I think of uh, more like, you know, guys that didn't come back and for guys that didn't get a medal, like soldiers on that, you know, in the mud, and a lot of other guys that did a lot more than I did, and they didn't get medals. So I why the hell die? Crazy. This November 11th, for the first time in almost two decades, he can wear them proudly and remember them. Red Sharon, CBC News, Calgary.